Welcome back to the LCS, everyone. We've got another Verizon post-game interview. I'm joined by Kumo after the FlyQuest victory. So, well, you know, Trindamir looking pretty good for you there. I think the second time you've played the pick in spring. How'd you feel about your play? Um, Actually, this game felt pretty easy, I guess, because I was playing against Malphite. I think there's not much interaction in the lane, so I was just pretty much free scaling. And yeah, in the later team fights, it was really easy to play out as well. Yeah, this game in general was pretty tight, though, coming down to those team fights. Tell me a bit about what your team was focusing on to make sure you stayed in it with a lot of the objective trades as well. Um, I think we just focused on, like, make sure we secured all the dragons after they got the first two. Um, I think a lot of the clutch smites that they got really kept us in the game keeping in it to make sure that you get the win in the end. I know we were talking a little bit during the break prior to this interview about coming into this week. Can you share with the audience kind of what you were focusing on after last week to lead to a 2-0 here? Um, yeah, I mean, after last week, it was pretty rough. Like, for my individual performance, I think I played really poorly. And right after, I just needed to change my perspective on how I approach my practice. And yeah, I just... Worked hard, I guess. <laughs> and try to keep rolling with it, right? And yeah. follow that momentum. I believe, if I remember correctly, it's CLG and 100 Thieves that you're facing in the next week. Mm -hmm. So what are your thoughts going into those so you can try and keep getting this going for FlyQuest? Um, yeah, ready to smash. All right, ready to smash. Let's yep. go. Ready for some more breakdown on the analyst desk. So let's head on over to the State Farm analyst desk. Uh, FlyQuest getting the win over Dignitas in this one, and in doing so, break the trend that we had just pointed out <laughs> the other day with Kumo on a blind pick here and getting the win. Yeah, so he blind picks Trindamir. I actually really love the Malphite response, which they already covered. Uh, we also see the Jarvan 4 coming through. We do. Oh. And Raz and I had a little bit of a back and forth in terms of whether we like it here or not. Uh, I'm, I think River is always going to pick Jarvan 4 when he can, just because of the way that it allows him to affect side lanes. And then the argument into Hecarim and the rest of the team comp is like, okay, Hecarim, how much do you want him to, uh, with his like power first clear, like scale to six? and Or how much is he going to interact with his lanes early on? Because I argue that Hecarim can also interact with his lanes early on, do his fast clear. Yeah, I mean, right now the jungle meta feels like it's getting impacted more by just fast clears like Udi or Hecarim um, that we've been seeing. I mean, last game we got to see a little bit of innovation with the, the Kha'Zix, but like here, uh, J4 makes sense just because he knows he's going up against a flashless jungler and uh, an AD carry that if you can burn flash in one fight with one ulti, like you can get a lot of resources going into a, uh, an important Drake fight. So it makes sense in this situation. Um, but like going into the FlyQuest perspective, it was just, it was nice hearing from Kumo just talking about how, you know, changing mindset, having a bad week and, and kind of taking a different approach in practice, like that's just great to see because yeah, FlyQuest is in, was <laughs> downward trajectory and wanted to kind of change that uh, for themselves. So it's nice for them to do that off this game. Yeah, I mean, 2-0 weekend for FlyQuest has to feel great. As you know, even in Boom. the pre-show, I was like, oh, well, maybe they overperformed a little bit, but they are now again, climbing back their way up to the top of the standings. And it was a back and forth game. It's a game that you don't feel great about winning, I'm sure, if you are FlyQuest, given the position that the game state ended up in with, like you were talking about, that Malphite counterpick and some of the team fights that started going in Dig's favor after it being so back and forth. It did feel like Dignitas, to me, was kind of getting in control of this game. Uh, and I think the fact that FlyQuest were able to find their way back into it does speak at least to their mid and late game team fight coordination. Yeah, I mean, the last team fight for me was the most heartbreaking one, just because they very much should have been able to uh, take it. They were in a great positioning. Uh, all it really took was just a, a, like a better window for a Malphite ulti, and he ended up solo Malphite ulting the Nautilus. Um, if it was in a better position, if he was just even more patient, you would have gotten far more out of it. But no, Johnson was able to take over that fight. Right, it was it was the fight that we just saw on our screens where it felt like, ooh, Dignitas, uh, yeah. that was the mm -hmm. big win they needed. And yeah. with that counterpick Malphite, maybe they can roll this to a victory. Then we get to the fight you're talking about, Raz. And before we do, a quick shout out to our official delivery partner, Grubhub. Get your food delivered on time and at the lowest prices, guaranteed, or they'll make it right. Download the app today and get your food delivered all split long. 
Now, what was your Grubhub dub moment of all of spring split so far? That's the question we're asking you. Tweet at Grubhub this weekend using the hashtag Grubhub dub for a chance to win a $50 Grubhub gift card. But today it was Johnson in this final fight around Baron Raz that brought it home. So I talked about one perspective, which was the uh, Dignitas' perspective, but FlyQuest was, was you know, really interesting to see. They were taking this really slowly. Good for Nautilus to kind of walk in first, tank in uh, the first few resources. But then if you look at Johnson's POV, he is just firing, having the flash out of the uh, Victor ultimate. Look at Victor here. Blue just uh, uh, flashes over the wall, seeing if he can get the one shot on towards Johnson. Nah, he takes the auto on, on with Chakram. He's able to get the uh, uh, kill on towards Victor. I thought that Johnson had played excellently in this fight, considering how, you know, Dignitas uh, poorly played the engage. Was that your most improved call out? Somebody called out Johnson. That was yours. Yeah, John okay, sorry. Oh. Uh, sorry to attribute. No, uh, you're very smart. Uh, <laughs> 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 I just think it's interesting. Uh, we had a big conversation about some top performers at the, or some most approved performers at the top of the day, and he's the reason they win this one. Yeah, and I mean, I think it's cool to reiterate the fact that he was the one that called for Afro to come back. I think the two of them have been coordinating really well. And then, once again, I also think that we can probably credit some of their uh, coolness under or under pressure in some of these, again, like team fights where it does not look like they're going to be in an advantageous position to Afromu and being able to, uh, as Kumo already pointed out in the interview, kind of rally and get and over some control, of their losses. And control fake got into alting that, that's him. It. Yeah. I'm not he has that power. Look at me here. I hooked in like an idiot. It's like, whoa, I guess I'll go on him. And then there you go. You win your team the game. Yeah, easy. Magic. Right, outplay. Mind control. There you go. <laughs> All right, yeah. well, ahead of us lies a battle between uh, former teammates when we've got TSM facing off against Golden Guardians. Check it out. Uh, TSM have been looking really rough. I think they've been dealing with a lot of internal issues and just a lot of noise, I think, is a good way to put it. So they don't look super strong, but I always put, you know, a little bit of faith in my boys back there. So I think it's always going to be a good match um, and competitive, at least. Yeah, my message to uh, the boys on TSM. You guys are kind of inting right now, so if you can keep that for one more week against us, uh, that'd be nice. You know, a free dub is a free dub. I think the image that I'm like a mob fight or like an inter um, is somewhat accurate. I think this year I've been able to tone it back a little bit and be more calculated. Um, I, I am the kind of person who likes to front line if I can and then play on my limits and edges. So. I just think last year I blended a lot and it really showed and that's how I got this image of me. But this year, onward, I want to just be the good Malphite only. <laughs> there are too many things that we can take out of every a lot, a lot of heard. jokes there. But I love Lost uh, giving credit to TSM as an organization. Like, And we've talked about this. It's an organization that's not going to sit and stew in bad performances they're going to look to make changes and that he has faith that they'll end up performing better and they'll get there but also could you just wait one more week yeah, before you yeah, turn yeah, back on you know like, like malphite for one <laughs> yeah. More week yeah exactly things. one more week of malphite for tactical <laughs> and then we're good but you know what and and i really respect tactical for him kind of uh admitting to right and coming to terms with that identity that has swirled around him but by the same token, in, he's been one of the top performers on TSM throughout this entire split, even while they have struggled, at least in, in my opinion. So I do kind of want to talk about um, this matchup, 80 carries. We'll start on the lost side of things, if only because he is going up against mm -hmm. his former org in a player who faced a lot of criticism in his performance when he was on TSM. Yeah, I mean, as a player, he's just gotten improved, improved. You can already see it in the wanted posters. He's gone <laughs> up against his former teammates on TSM. He took them down in the last bracket going up against uh, Huni, Spika. He took down IMT. In fact, he was the nail in the coffin for that one. Sword Art. So, Sword Art's done the play, He's so. still at large? Yeah, yeah, we gotta get out there, world. We gotta find him. We gotta, <laughs> yeah, gotta find him. Game, he's gotta go up and face him. <laughs> and he went to <laughs> international, both of them, and then... Yeah. <laughs> and, of, and of course, they took down uh, Headshot Bjergsen. That was the one loss uh, that yep. you know, Bjergsen's yeah. going to have to remember. He was talking about it in a Travis Gafford interview. So, like, good. hey, loss has been the one who's the biggest winner this split. You got to assume the bounty for Bjergsen was the biggest as well. I wish I was the, the total yeah, underneath. The 1K yeah. way, uh, bounty. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> yeah. Playing for his stake in TSM. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, lost. Uh, 
I think this has been a major uptick uh, for him, uh, but it will be about finishing strong this Golden Guardians squad, right? We've talked about, uh, you know, what their aims are as a team, uh, what Anero has said about, hey, we went five and four in the first half. We should do better in the second half. They took a loss on the first day of a second round robin play. We'll see if they can get one in the win column here today. And this tweet from Curry uh, is really nice because obviously he knows him from TSM and, you know, Lost and Sword Art were kind of the scapegoats for a lot of problems that happened when TSM even was winning last uh, year. So it's really cool to see how well Lost is playing. And additionally, Golden Guardians as a team are setting him up for success with what has been a really strong early game plans going into most of their games. Yeah, and I mean, we already talked about the FTX most improved when it came to Johnson. Lost was the natural discussion because even with being on Golden Guardians, he has been able to now play both sides. This not perma weak side. He's been getting the ball a lot of the times and on his affiliates play has been giving them wins. Him and mm -hmm. Ole have been doing a fantastic job. I think the support is the other last little bit you have to tie into the yes. carries. Ole has been incredible. Shenyi came back up finally from Academy uh, in his first game. Struggled a little bit, I think, but hopefully they will find some angles in this game to get some dubs. Well, TSM looking to make that one into a two. That was a horrible, horrible transition, wow. James. Wow. Okay. Uh, <laughs> that was my favorite you've ever done. No, I, was, I, that was your best I hate you so much. All right. Well, TSM looking to put another win on the board while Golden Guardians looks to stay above 500. As we get ready to toss it over to Jat and Freak, here's a little sneak peek into Freak and Kobe preparing for their cast just yesterday. My question to you two gents out there is can you top that? Uh, obviously, Jack, I mean, this, this is a little bit goody. This predates Fortnite, yeah. by the way, so, you know, deal with the zoomers. I can't do that. I can just... Do you want to learn? No. Okay, it's six <laughs> steps. So, hips to the left, hands up. <laughs> okay. And then you just kind of go through them. Yeah. Okay, so, so yeah. Uh, yeah. It's, okay, so, so, yeah, you, you go... I have more hip okay. flexibility from okay. golf, so I can turn okay. a little better. So, you just kind of go in and back, right? So, step yeah. one is just, like, in and back. Yeah. Is the game started yet? No, so it's fine. Okay. So, in and back, and then just switch over. Hands to the left, yes. then in and back. Switch, in and back. Okay, Switch, I don't want to practice. in and back. There we go. And then you speed it up. Okay, yeah. <laughs> my doctor told me to floss every day and my teeth never look better. Welcome to I Golden can't. Garden vs. TSM. I can't. I can't. Yes, you can. And that's okay. I believe in the oh, youth that believes man. in you. Rise! God. Band away, Zeri up table as well. You have been saved by Champion I Select. I have, I have it on good authority. The authorities, I made it up. They delayed the game until we were done here. Good for them. Yeah. Good for them. I'm really happy I, I don't that. think they did. No, they didn't. Absolutely yeah. not. Okay. All I was told, by the way, is there's going to be a bit when they toss you, play along. Yeah. And I was I like, what are they going to do? And it's like, oh, <laughs> here's us from rehearsal. Got it. And you had to take it there. I was going to do something different. I know. I have my own little dance. It was a good dance. Yeah. It was a good dance, you know? But I just wanted to elevate you like um, chili oil on vanilla ice cream. Just elevated that little bit. That's flossing. Yeah, basically. Yeah. And what do we got going on here? Gwen off the table as well. Ari still a highly prized pick. Golden Guardians both spending their effort on the solo lanes of TSM. Gonna allow Tactical his pick of the litter. I will say both these 80 carries have looked really good. I will say, honestly, this season, I think every bot laner has been, like, I think are all good. Hmm. Right? Like, and maybe I'm, like, missing someone who's, like, had a pretty rough season, but I feel like every single bot laner I've seen have been like, yeah, that's a good player. And then this team, yep, that's a good player, too. I can't think of one where I'm like, oof, this is a really rough season. That is an interesting take because, like, I, I don't disagree with it because I think the mechanical skill of so many of these AD carries is actually very high, but I also wonder if it's a reflection of the power level of the champions in the role. That's true too. Which could just be like, Jinx and Aphelios have been very strong. They're champions who, if they get ahead, can have a chance of one be a game. And then everyone has had that kind of hard carry moment at some point in the split, which leaves a very positive memory yeah. of the role. But yeah, that's, I haven't thought about that that much. Yeah. I will say though, I think getting that final 10%, we heard Tactical talk about it, right? Like, mm -hmm. I want to be the good Malphite. I like playing on the edge. I like playing in the front and getting it done. And that last 10% is tough to achieve. Mm -hmm. And unless you see players do that last 10%, I think Danny's a good example. Someone who like plays at the edge, but it works so often, right? Those pop-offs were like a, a no kill to the triple kill. That's that last 10%, that's hard to reach, but it's hard to know it was there, right? right? Identifying that, oh, you could have flashed forward on a for triple kill, 
Like, imagine making that call, right? That's so tough to tell someone they have to do that in the middle of the game. Mm -hmm. But but that's mm -hmm. how I think you distinguish yourself. And everyone else is like, oh, they're just all quite good. So anyway, on the draft itself, Tom Kent still picked up. Here's Sin Zhao in there as well. Uh, Senna is an option. I believe we've seen Tactical play it before. Does have one, although uh, he played it as uh, Farm Senna, if I recall correctly. But right. still a very good option, I think, Senna Tom Kench. I think the Aphelios is probably more likely yeah. to come in after after the first phase is done. And it's this is very generic first three for both teams. Jinx first pick, almost everyone values Jinx above Aphelios. If we had the Varus, that would be different. It's definitely heavier poke and can outrange Jinx in mid game. It's something I know Tactical does like, but the fact that it's just a hover makes me skeptical that it's not just gonna be an Aphelios. Well, time ticks down. I'm curious if they... I mean, we have seen Tom Kench be the option when you're playing Ooh. poke heavy teams. And the thing is, Corky is a very likely ban at this point in time. So if you're playing for a poke team, it's actually positioned in a spot where you can get rid of the synergistic options. And Varus Kench is also like a very lane dominant yeah. lane uh, for Tactical and Shenny to try and make something happen early. So definitely don't hate it. We'll see if they can make something happen early in bot. Unsurprisingly, Tom Kench generally favored into engaged champions, right? Looks good in the champs like Nautilus and whatnot. Oh, you hit the engage, that's fine, right? Gobble up, cool, we kind of after your entire kit. I'm still here as a Tom Kench. Uh, of course, Nautilus locked in anyway. Uh, they just want to start team out of the bot lane. Golden Guardians, we heard from Anero. He was on the analyst desk yesterday saying that even though it didn't work out, they had a pretty rough game against, I think it was Cloud9. Yep. Um, he was happy the Liquid was going for the fights and, you know, yep. played those ones because, yeah, it's Summit, but. We want you to play as though you can win these matchups, and you know the option of playing through you should be there. Don't just take the L because you know the name uh, didn't work out, but you know still happy about the team and what they're working on. Of course, this is now a much easier opponent. Golden Guardians right now alone in fifth, and Cloud9 is already out of the way in the second round robin. They win here; they're tied for fourth with hundred thieves. Seven games to go until playoffs. Golden Guardians to me right now are my nod for one of the playoff teams to make it. Mm. DSM, of course, still trying to figure out a way to um, put out the fire. I've talked with a couple of LCS coaches about it. Um, and then one of the opinions that I've heard repeated is okay. the thought that, yeah, I feel like TSM players are checked out. Like, like the mm -hmm. outside opinion is that like it's already doomed no matter what they do. Like the players don't believe anymore. I, I don't know if that's true, right? But just adding to the conversation, that's one of the things I've heard. Interesting. That's a that's a tough opinion to have from the outside. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, I, personally, I'm not going to take a huge stake into that one. Corky grab, actually interesting. So, not really uh, vying towards a poke team. They're going to go ahead and blind the top lane pick. Instead, they're going to give takeover counter pick. Corky is shown. Victor is up as a pretty obvious answer back if you want to go for it. And it also means Licorice gets counter pick up against Huni. It definitely does. Interesting that they're actually giving take over the counter pick instead of having a top lane counter pick. I thought just based off the top lane bans, Aurelia being down, Trinomir being down, Jace being down, I was kind of expecting Huni to just blind the Nar, and then they'd get the, the mid lane pick on five. But going Graves into Nar is, you know, we've seen a lot of dominant Graves just being able to farm up the whole map, and that's kind of what they're going for. And take over, going with a more aggressive pick. He's going to have to make something happen against Corky. That's going to be fun. I'm looking up the match. I'm curious which way it goes, because I haven't seen that one a ton. Because uh, we just don't see a ton of Salus and Pro. He's a good answer to TF. Yeah. You'd win the early lane. You could match the ulties. Uh, Solo Kid puts it as a very, very flat lane. They're just both mm -hmm. kind of chilling. Uh, Corky, in general, of course, scales really hard. So yeah. uh, we expect Salus to have a good laning phase, but you also expect a 4 item Corky to feel great. Hex Drinker likely to be in the build to just make sure he doesn't get all in. And, uh, we'll see where it goes. Yeah, looking at this draft, I see T uh, Golden Guardians looking for a lot of scaling, and TSM's going to want to make something happen early down bot with Varus and TK. Spawning was refreshing. Here's to the round between rounds. This game is rigged. This game is out to get me. Welcome back to the last game of the week, week five of the LCS. Tenth year running and Golden Guardians 
upper hand against TSM so far this season right now in fifth place. TSM for the first time in last after so many weeks, hoping to find their footing. It's their second time uh, making a roster swap. They switched supports, they switched mids uh, with the supports coming on back in, hoping to find a version that works for them. Huni on the Graves, and I think Tactical has been, to me, the brightest point on this team, making a interesting choice in going for the Varus, leaving up some of the more common picks on the table. Yeah, the one win they had against Immortals, he did 70% of the team's damage, which was an LCS record for an individual game, but it's just been that one. I actually think, if we think of the 10 years of TSM history, uh, we haven't seen them as playoffs. Uh, they're already at nine losses. Usually 10 losses misses playoffs. Right. Uh, a loss here might actually confirm their worst split in their history. So if they're going to yeah. run the table, now's the time to start. I remember them getting sixth once they in, did in a battle nine, where they... they did they, nine and nine. Yeah. yeah, and that's the lowest I can remember because I can never remember them being lower than sixth coming into playoffs. And actually still made finals that split, by the way. Like, this was the run where TSM just never missed the road by the end. They always found a way to make it happen. That has been a really surprising one. And, and you mentioned the 10 years of TSM and LCS. Of course, they even predate that. They went to... Uh, I'm 99% sure they went to World Season 1, yeah. And then uh, 2012 as well, they were actually the top L uh, the top NA uh, qualifier in that one. So, I mean, they had been an absolute top dog just absolutely forever. Yeah. This is obviously a big surprise for a lot of their fans. One of my friends is a really big TSM fan. He's like, every week he's like, this is the one. This is the one, I believe. This is the time. And, and then, you know, they lose. They have like a rough week. And he's like, nah, it's fine. I knew that was going to happen. But next week, though, is our time. And I'm, I'm happy that like the fans still holding out hope in a lot of cases. Obviously, some are, are quite upset with the record so far, but everyone who does hold out hope for the fans, I appreciate you for keeping it up for your team. Hope springs eternal. Yeah. I want to see this bot lane, how much tactical and Shenyi can make things happen. Halo Blades Varus, so very good early game at the quick all-ins if Shenyi is able to land a Q. They won't get level 2 first, though, so they're going to have to wait for the wave to bounce back before they try anything sneaky. Yep. And then it becomes basically how well can Golden Guardians manicure it. They get a nice hook in into a root, into a root, and that's going to be a better trade overall. Shen, you can't do anything much for that one, so backs up a little bit late. It doesn't matter a ton, but it does burn him one potion for that misstep. Golden Guardians get the wave to sit right in front of the turret, a quick trinket ward. Usually you don't get ganked by 230, so they're going to be safe enough on that one. And now a quick game pause. Interesting pause. I was just going to check the cooldown left on Aftershock. It does look like Ole's Aftershock will be back by the time Tom Kench would try and make any aggressive play. I was thinking maybe maybe he wanted to burn the Aftershock or something, but it mm. doesn't look like they will have any type of window. And we'll get news on the pause as soon as we can. And in the meantime, yeah, we can check in on what the matchups are once we get the unpause going. It is always nice. I forget if you can hit tab during a pause because it's been so long since I've played on Tournament Realm. I don't remember. Or you're just lucky that the game paused while you had the scoreboard up, and it was like, oh, great. Now I can just, like, you know, memorize everything that everyone built. Interesting. I think you can. I think I know you can't. I'm pretty sure you can't move the map around. Right. You can't scroll over and, you know, see where your wards are and whatnot. But All right. They're readying mouse up. Issue. There's a small mouse issue. But I'm seeing people type R in chat, so yeah. I think we're going to be getting back momentarily. Are you a fan of lowercase or capital R for ready? I'm a lowercase R. I do, too, but only because it's just there. It's just faster. You know what's actually weird, though? Typing in all chat requires you to hit shift enter. So just holding on a shift for longer, arguably faster actually, right? Shift enter R, let go. I Instead mean, of shift can, enter, let go of shift R. You just press enter R, enter. Uh, no, because you want to type in all chat. I guess. Right? Chat isn't guess, defaulted to all, yeah. right? Unless I'm sure. trolling. Sure. So technically, you just you know keep the button held down. So it's while. the same? Maybe. Yeah. But I type R a lot in lobby chat. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is just enter R. Enter. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Or even just like R enter because it's just, it's already like on the box, depending. Yeah, whatever. It's a good min-max conversation. It is. It's really important, you know? We're learning how to dance. We're learning how to type R in all chat or lobby chat. You know, who knows? TSM's lane pushing back down now and speaking to have no problem getting the bottom scuttle. Well done there. We're pretty much right at 315. Very small gold to TSM. Pride Stalker actually going fully for a full clear on this Lee Sin. Is a full clear heavy kind of player. Finishes the whole thing by about 320. Good Ooh. fight in the mid lane, forcing a blaze all to flash. Great stun. Landed by takeover to set that one up. I mean, yesterday. Oh, we got a fight. It's a good chompers in. It flash away, but Shenyi, could he still be the target? Nah, I'm not gonna land Sonic Wave. Out they go. I just think this is super interesting with TSM having lost so many games and trying to track their play style over the past two games. So yesterday, they played Rek'Sai Ari in the mid lane, right? They were trying to get as many early things happening as possible. Just look at the state of the lanes. 
Graves pushed up. Silas was just pushed up. They burned flash. Bottom lane also pushed up. They're trying to play with three lanes of early prio and letting Speaker mm -hmm. go wherever he wants. So they want to fight all the just time. Just wide enough. Ignite is on. I think he can maybe solo tactical. Zap's not going to land. The Guardian. He walks in to grab a Guardian shield. Gets the heal at the very end. Oh. He's still holding flash and baits one of the tower. And that he means got him. enough. Tactical decision summoner. He plays it on the edge and he gets rewarded. He likes to play on the limits, he says. That was a big old limit because he had to flash back into the turret, gets Ole to flash follow, doesn't have fatal damage. The wave is now also in an atrocious spot for Lost. He is able to get the cannon, but it's going to deny a significant amount of minions. Watch this one more time. Tom Kinchvaris generally want the all-ins. Uh, we also heard that Ole is possibly the most aggressive support in the LCS in a player interview yesterday. The exhaust goes down right away, but look at that upfront damage onto Tactical, moving for the Guardian Shield. Absolutely crucial. Saves his heal for when lost flashes. Saves his flash for when Ole's auto would be lethal and gets the first blood. Two moves, two summoner spell choices that if he didn't time exactly then, he's either dead or he doesn't bait the opponent to go in. So huge first blood. Really hugely done, especially the fact that Ignite has the healing cut on at 60%. So very important to wait on that heal and not lose almost the entire value while you're still ignited. Knows the limits. Obviously, you got to give credit to Shen Yi. Instantly exhaust, run forward, zone out the Jinx. She wasn't part of that fight for a long time. She got one flash auto afterwards, and that was when everyone else ran away. So both those players playing it really well. Want to give credit to both where that is due, because I think uh, on both sides for TSM, that was played really, really nicely. 600 gold lead pretty much right here for TSM as we get the resets of the mid lane. That play is all going to come back soon. They're going to want to keep the pressure up, though. Shenyi and Speaker are hoping to find someone in the jungle. Everything has just been cleared, though, and Shenyi is going to be spotted on a ward. Surely Pride Stalker. She goes in for a bit, but Speaker's on the way. It's going to be a 3v2 for a little bit. Speaker in front of the fight does get spotted. You know what's going on. Jumps over the wall and going to go right away for the dragon. Yeah, I mean, they've got the bot lane pressure. A Blaze Olive. Would walk through control wards to contest, so not gonna get to do it. Yeah, Hex Drake, a nice one to pick early. Ability hits attack speed, gonna be very useful for, especially the Graves in the top lane. And they are just camped up front in this lane, daring Golden Guardians to fight them. Trying to buy some minions, though. You can see if Tactical kind of has to play for Qs to do it. Obviously, the jungler is doing something else. Nice little knock for Shani to make that die a bit faster. Saves about three seconds off of Speak is clear. Pretty well done. We keep a close one. TSM with the gold lead and the first dragon. Maybe the sign of things to come. They can find a way to keep improving upon this. Turns out pressure everywhere. Working pretty well. Take over. It is down CS right now. Corky is going to be ahead in the lane so far. And that flash coming up in about a minute and a half. Yeah, and I wonder if they're going to go for this blue buff invade. If you take a look at the jungle right now and the fact that they have the top lane push, but Speak is actually sticking around to let TakeOver clear this because they had a small window to possibly move into this area. They're going to be a little late for the blue buff. Pride Stalker gets away with it. Yep. And back on was basically third full clear is really efficiency focused even on the Lee Sin. No great early ganks. Is Blaze all going to be pushed back by TakeOver's salvo of rockets. And indeed, Olive is... I mean, he could try to rocket for the cannon. Nope, sorry. Unfortunately, it was the power knocking all the way down. So it gets three caps and loses the rest of the wave, basically. Well done to take over. And keep in mind, in the game they played yesterday, TSM had a gold lead up through 15 minutes against yeah. FlyQuest. FlyQuest, who's in third place right now, I might add. Like, mm -hmm. this new version with Shenyi back and take over on is actually punching pretty well against some solid teams. Especially in the early game. They're playing very aggressive. I think they drafted for early game as well. Early gank mid lane to try and unlock Silas, which is huge. And now they're going to be looking for Pride Stalker. They're going to get a lot of damage here. Slowed down, finally flashed away. And they're going to get a flash chase. Takeover is in. Kicked back out with a knockup as well. Got him, buddy. Lands the stolen rocket. Takeover living up to his name. Oh, they want more. <laughs> Look at Shaggy going in. Finds a slow. Speaker's on the way. Exhaust, couple of slows. The Chompers are really well placed. Good have lost to hold them. Didn't need it for the top catch. Just in case something else is going on. That is some good trigger discipline. However, look at the turret plate fall and look at the minions going to waste. Yeah, this is really big for that bottom lane now. Up over 20 minions. Two plates down. All of that stems from mid prio, though. The early gank that Speaker was able to get mid lane allowed them to return move to then go for the Raptors, which got the kill for Pride Stalker. Then there's nothing to stop Speaker from moving down through the jungle, which gives them another plate bot. So TSM, very good early game for them. 2,000 gold lead at nine minutes. Go, onto the wave. 
And Lodge takes a little bit of poke. I mean, he'll be fine, more or less. They knocked down the rest of it. 18 CS lead already onto Lethality. Pick up here for Tactical. Look, it's going to be probably the sort of full Eclipse Manamuni kind of build. And the Qs are going to hurt for sure. Can try to match the poke that Corky has. Pride Stalker and all of it down the way towards top side. Keep in mind, it's nine minutes in. Rift Herald has spawned. Ward Control belongs to Golden Guardian. Speak is going to spot this out right on time. Will it matter, though? I mean, Huni gets the first move. Where is Nar is going to be the question. Walking up right now from base, maybe to build up the rage and, and play I mean, for it. It's it's bought plates for Herald. That's the trade. If TSM moves in to fight, there's a good chance it's a 4v5 because Tactical is actually just full shown on the map taking place. So TSM cannot contest this. Can't. Thankfully, Lethality there is not the fastest turret killer, but if you can kill minions, you get the extra attack speed, and it's not too bad. Uh, Lethal actually does affect towers. They do have armor, at least with plates on. So it gets a little bit out of that one. And going to keep trying now as Licorice fights up against Huni, dodges most of the skill shots and puts him low. Can we find the dive? Looks like no. Ole, not level six. No play to be had, but they are going to zone him off the tower. So maybe some plates back this way for Golden Guardians. Pride Soccer is going to take the whole way from his top laner and from yeah. Lost. Honestly, like, we don't see this that often, but it's a good move. They were losing yeah. the lane so badly, they could they would lose every 2v2. The bottom side of their map was out of control. They need to get farm onto Lost. So, yeah, just swap. And they get the Rift Herald on the way. They're actually competing for first turn yeah. here. It's going to be probably still going over to TSM, but getting the trade either way is pretty big. Tactical's got to hit that quick. Oh, Shen Yi dropped damage. First turret went to Lee Sin. Shen Yi walked away from 150 gold changing hands. I know he tried to map it out, yeah. but he was off by two auto attacks. Yeah, so the idea is if he walks away, he might be giving more gold to Tactical and also getting some space on the map. Didn't time it right, they lose first turret, and the lane swap pays off in a big way for Golden Guardians. Really huge, but it is still TSM up 1,700 gold. Keep in mind, yeah, both these teams got five plates. Both these teams got the tower. Only 150 bonus to Golden Guardians is, I mean, pretty pale when you compare to the fact that there's CS leads everywhere, there's a kill lead on the squad, so TSM really striking hard in the early game. Yeah, and about 20 seconds to go on this next Drake. Let's see if this is just conceded over to TSM because Golden Guardians is is fairly behind. They do have Mythic on Lost, but it, it does look like TSM's in pretty good position. Yeah, I'm a fan of hitting Mythic. I know losing boots sometimes can really hurt, but kind of getting that spike as soon as possible I think is very, very valuable. Also, he may just have um, footwear here and can't buy boots until mm -hmm. it floats up an inventory in 25 seconds. Yeah. Uh, pretty common for AD carries because just getting your damage spikes ASAP is actually pretty worthwhile. He does not have free boots. Okay. He's got biscuits and cosmic. All right, so yeah, he is going to be uh, waiting to get on for the rest of it then. He'll have to buy boots later, but even still, I think he's a defensible build. Delaying on boots, just getting the damage. But second dragon goes cleanly over to TSM. They still have control of the bottom side. Silas moves down to that one. The wave's already pushed. Uh, we know it's going to be very easy for a spell-based Varus to get wave control. Uh, fully charge a Q, one out of her minion, knocks on the whole wave. You can't contest it too easily. If you try, you might lose 200 health on a poke. And take over. By the way, Silas, um, heavily favored into Nar. Mini Nar is yeah. quite squishy. However, with Holebreaker, has enough MR to survive. True. Nar ult is also so amazing for Silas to take. There are very, very good ultimates for the Silas pick. Want to point that out? We got a river fight. We got a river fight. Ola going to be rooted in place. Thankfully, as Aftershock doesn't take too much damage. What about round two? He meant to disengage in all places, ulti tried it back and forth. Doesn't mean a ton. I mean, Golden Guardians had the numbers there, so even though they got jumped on, TSM couldn't follow up. Huni actually wasted a little bit of time running down for potential fight and then running back. I want to... I really want to pay attention to this game about how TSM plays from this point. One, they haven't been in this point very often. And two, when they've been behind in the mid game, things have gone very poorly. So really pay attention to how TakeOver plays side lane. It's new for him and this new team. And then also how well Tactical and Shen Yi can get push mid and then make something happen in the river. That was their first attempt. They didn't really get much, but I think they're going to be looking for a lot more. Here we go. Plates dropping in 50 seconds. Will they get any damage really done other than the poke right here? Ole, nope. It's on the last and a half HP, and not a lot of sustain yet in this champion. Doesn't seem to have Legend Bloodlines. That will stick for a while. Huni does push in. Looks for plate number two. I think he might have just gotten it. It's pretty solid here, but they're going to catch Shen Yi going for wards without any help right now. So rooted in place, not able to flash a kick flash just to be safe. And Lost gets the 300 goal. That's exactly what you don't want to see. They had a pushed up top lane and a pushed up bot lane, so they... In theory, they should have set up for any move that is made in that jungle. But Shen Yi is 1,500 units from the nearest teammate, gets CC locked, doesn't flash, doesn't W, and Golden Guardians repel the push. Now, 
everything on TSM has to reset. Graves and Tactical, sure they needed the shop anyway, but they're gonna lose that map pressure and reestablish it on the next turn. Jacob just gets the farm down here, walks over to the lane, and gets a little bit of gold, but at least TSM retained that two turret lead. They retained that 300 gold advantage. Uh, they are still overall winning this one, but wait to see if these kind of missteps keep happening. TSM had a lead about exactly this big against FlyQuest at this point in time, and it slipped away as well. If Golden Gardens can play the mid-game as well, or if TSM fumble as much as yesterday, we might see the same story here. TSM make it to one and 10, but so far, Honestly, I've got faith in the fact they're playing a pretty good game right now. And as they change things around, try to find a roster that works, this is the one that has, I test, looked the best mm -hmm. of the versions of TSM so far. Yeah, they've given themselves an opportunity to win. And for Golden Guardians, it's about holding out a little bit, let Corky get more of his items, let's Jinx scale up. And honestly, the early game assault has been fairly well neutralized by them. I do want to also call out Golden Guardians. They had a very good year based on preseason expectations. I think most of their performances would make me think they should be better than 5-5, five and five, but here's a pick in the river. They got Spica. First start to get the ulti across. No one is knocked back by, but they gotta get back into the circle though. Ole gonna run out of health for a stopwatch, and there's the ulti for Shen Yis. Puts him right back forward. Ole likely to die, and not also those stolen means the fight gets to continue. One for O so far. When's the second coming up? Licorice right now gets to run away. Good job by Spica and Shen Yi. They take basically no damage. They get one back. Okay, so the aggressor is punished in this case. Ole, now no stopwatch and no flash. Really gonna hurt his ability to play aggressive from here on out. And the setup is again there for TSM as they push mid. Gonna happen. Keep in mind, Nautilus is walking out from base right now. Speak of Ole, same for the Wuhan Kench. Makes it a little bit tough. I mean, he does still have flash, but it is tougher to send out. Mega. Fight, yeah, and, and Mega Nar coming up. That's actually a pretty big deal. Sin Zhao is not tanky without the ulti. That's such a big deal. So Licorice can buy a lot of space here. Sweeper spots the fact that Ole's coming. They're going to find the root. They force the flash out. They don't quite get the rest. That slow could have been a lot, but it looks like Second Herald will go to Golden Guardians, but it's going to be TSM pushing through on mid. Can they get the entire tower? That's going to be a good question to ask because Lee Sin and Corky are still far away. They're staying around. They're going to get the demolish. I think almost going through. Gnarl taken. Who needs to have to pull more auto turret nearly dead in mid? Yeah, this will be really interesting. TSM has positioning in river, but Golden Guardians will probably drop Herald as soon as TSM move for that dragon. But on the flip side, Golden Guardians really wants to be able to stop this next dragon. Corky's recalling. I think he has package. Yeah, there's the sound effect. And they get a lot of damage on a tactical. Okay, That's tactical you. takes the least in Q, flash the way, gets his way as far as it came in the oh. rocket lands, and Pride Stalker will live! Oh no! The flash was not burned to dodge the Q. He pulls him in, and that is map control. Golden Guardians summon the Herald for mid. They're gonna walk down to the bottom river. Disaster there for TSM. Yes, the Herald drops and won't hit the turret, but Golden Guardians will stop TSM from reaching Soul Point. When you can try. Took an attempt. Ult from, ult from far away. If Pride Stalker greeds, tries to hold a smite, there's always a chance. Not gonna happen there. Mid lane cleared, and one kill on the board, one dragon going back over. Golden Guardians holding on to the mid game. Going back to that fight in the mid lane, it actually looked to me like Tactical might have stopped the Lee Sin damage. The timing on that is like a couple frames. He just takes cool. way too much damage up front. He seven heals the hits, that's what it was. Okay, yeah, so he does take the damage from the Q, and then not enough clearance between him and Shinny to actually block the Jinx ult. Yeah, and he wanted to bait it, right? It was, okay, I'll ult as you come in, I'll heal flashback to safety, let's sure. knock him down, but unfortunately, it wasn't enough damage, right? It was more or less a full health lease in and uh, able to walk back away from the turret, so uh, nice attempt, but obviously, yeah, the skill shots landed. The tactical, despite his summoners, gets the ulti on from Lost, and the gold still remains pretty flat, though. Despite the kills back and yep. forth, it is still a, a quite close game. 2K gold, one dragon lead, TSM by the scoreboard are ahead right now. By the scoreboard, but based on the momentum of the game, I would say Golden Guardians is starting to get stronger. Murrow Mana, also a massive transform there for a Blaze Olive's Corky. He's gotta watch out. That's a lot of damage, gets the ulti across. How much time can he buy though? Cause they're running right back in. Lee Sin kicks, follows the Q, and a knock on a tactical with no way to save. Flashes in for the Gore Drink, but they're still oh, gonna get done. back to safety. They're gonna get tactical. How about the rest though? Shen Yi slowed. Blast Plant's not in the right spot. Size up the rocket, but the team fight continues. They can't they get the kill just yet, but is it enough as Uni's in for two? Doing pretty well, flashing the safety, sidesteps as the Sonic Wave misses, but they're still gonna get the third Third kill, fourth kill.
Plus two to Golden Guardians. Communication, coordination, whatever you want to call it, Golden Guardians has it this game. They consistently are finding isolated members of TSM to start off these fights and coming out on top. Aggressive Ole has been setting up every single one of these, and Lost has been there to knock it down. Now 3-0 and 2, well on his way to his second item. Again, just kind of look at the map state right here. There's a Silas fully shown on the map up top. No one on Golden Guardians is showing, so that's a very dangerous spot to be in. Yes, TSM can collapse afterwards, but it's very late. When they move in, that's when Golden Guardians has actually saved their cooldown so they can obliterate Tactical off the start of the fight. They get the teleport in from Nar to chase further into the corridor, and an actually incredible Lee Sin kick from TakeOver is not enough to salvage the fight as they still fall uh, and have the disadvantage overall in the fight. I'm impressed by actually Lost having the understanding that a Lee Sin kick was going towards him. Mm. I don't know what kind of mindset you're in that you're like, oh, by the way, Silas might kick my teammates and hold on a fight going on right now, though. Shen Yi kicked to safety, thankfully. Could not find the rest of it. But, I mean, right, like, okay, when you're in champs, like, you're like, all right, they have Lee Sin. Good to know. I'll make sure I'm watching for the kick flash play. Like, <laughs> we're in a team fight. Silas is just hitting buttons. That's Nautilus flying towards my head. I got to flash away. Because Graves would have followed that one up, right? So yep. that is impressive by Lost to understand what was happening when there's 10 possible ults to play around. Very true. AD carries hard, man. Yeah. <laughs> we got some good AD carries. Yeah. Lost him pretty well. 3-0-2. Here we go. Licorice. Oh, he's not going to get the scoop back. Good ult, I think, by Hooney. Builds that last bit of distance. Doesn't get caught out. And still want to play the sideline pretty well on hole breaker. Up 30 CS. Okay. TSM still trying to break this mid turret. They have Silas roaming down. They could probably be able to get it on this wave. Everyone on TSM is first move to mid here. This ball. is actually a good timer for them. What else is going to happen? Pretty good damage. It's going to be bad for Ole. Trying to stay up. Gets the aftershock on. The front line for Spika. Three, two, one. Spit it back out. But now, is there another team fight? Rocket is up for Jinx, but no one's low enough to die to it. Holds on to the cooldown. That was a good move from TSM. Something they haven't been able to do in the past eight or so minutes. The, the reason that one worked, just to go over some, some basics, when your side lanes push up the waves, they generally get what's called a turn, which will used oftentimes to run mid lane, and you want to fight when you have the numbers advantage. But what's happened so many times in this game is TSM is moving when it's not their turn. They'll have a jungler in the river when a laner is showing on wave. They're just not in sync, but Golden Guardians is. So even though Golden Guardians doesn't have the waves pushed, they're still not getting caught on any of their turns, which is how they're able to come back in this game. It feels like that's, you know, a standard mid-level macro play, right? Of just, hey, you know, this is the kind of coach you want to drill into players and, and get a good uh, set of fundamentals where, you know, the idea of playing turns and, and considering minion waves as like a turn-based situ situation instead yeah. of a real-time situation, like, even I know that one, right? Like, that's just kind of how the game works. Every it's, three seconds, a new wave Yeah, comes it's very easy to state. It is much harder to do in-game when you're trying to track all these other things and possibly have a lot of chaos in communication. But that is what TSM is faltering on. That's why they've lost this league. That is the beauty of League of Legends, is you can you can mention macro concepts, and again, I, I agree with you, and then everything else changes. Hey, who's got a power spike? Hey, what effects is coming up? Hey, who's yeah. who's scary? Who could be in a brush? That all matters, right? And it, it adds texture to every one of these decisions. Tom Kent showing up. Here we go, fighting for the fourth dragon of the game. Would be two and two, or it could be still blow for TSM. Ole takes some poke, but he's going to be all right. Here's the dive in for Vega. Again, has the ulti, forcing Ole away, and the demon split up. This is going to be really dangerous. The Blaze all has a Valkyrie backwards, and nearly Ooh. dies, sidesteps to snipe. That could have been a kill if it was W empowered. That might have been a death on the Corky. Take over has a really good ultimate right now with Nar. He might want to try a flank around Licorice the sides. Mega. Golden Guardians, we'll see it though. Licorice Mega has flash. He can get a huge team fight start. Tom Kench ult is up to save. Package Take TP. over now on a ward. Can he play around it? 2k health on the Drake. Kick back, smite stolen. Well done, two to two. Mega Nar on to three. Here comes the oh. package, a big play. Turns in one, but how about the rest? Valk back for safety, trade it back on a Nar. But Silas dives in and get a second one up and it's TSM into the team fight. What a fight so far. They're still chasing. They're pushing in. Now Ola going to be stunned up. The dive right back in for Lee Sin's going to fall. And TSM get their revenge. Four kills. A push in for Hooney. This should be enough. The Chompers won't be enough. We'll be slowed. We'll be killed. And Ace, TSM may lose the Dragon, but they win the map, and they're going for Baron. What a swing right there. I, I have to see that fight again, because it looked like the package actually pushed half of TSM over the wall. Yeah. That's an ace, that's a Baron, but let's watch this fight one more time. Tight timing, teleport with package. They're gonna flip the dragon and go. The smite is there, but it doesn't impact the fight. Let's watch this. So Licorice bashes him against the wall, and then the package has a small displacement on it. It hits wow. two of them Rocket over the wall. Rocket would have killed them all. 
Like, wow. That would have been a triple straight up almost. I think, you know, Sinja would have lived, but. If it's a thicker part of the wall, they don't move over, and then they're literally trapped on the package until they die. But it pushes two of them to safety and makes them inaccessible. Wow. For Golden Guardians. That's a game changing move right there. That's unfortunate, but uh, it's an anti synergy at that small wow. part of the map. A couple of small things could have changed. That fight does look different, but at the end of the day, it is TSM, 4,000 gold lead, trying to stop the streak. It has been a rough road for TSM, five in a row. Naked roster drops, can we find a roster that works? Can we find something that goes for it? And now against the fifth place Golden Guardians, TSM, on the precipice of finding the second win. Really big Baron power play right here. Uh, Silas is at a huge power point in this game. Two more levels, he'll be level 16 with three items. That's when he really wants to try and take over. But they, I think they have to make this Baron count. TSM hasn't been good at setting up their own plays, but when they have the Baron here, that gives them easier wave push, and they got to find a way to get a large amount of gold out of this Baron. Just the 1K, though. For now, it's, you know, the guard, the Baron, the recall, a couple of those get reset. That's, you know, some standing money kind of gets pushed back. It's 4K, kind of just chilling. That's when they can get the resolution to grow this one a bit more. Silas in the bottom side is a good split pusher. I feel like he should be strong in either one of those matchups. So he can spend a lot of time down there and then come back up, steal a good ulti, start the team fight. Nautilus, you know, Lee Sin, Nar, all of them pretty solid ults to steal. It, it's actually pretty risky to do 1-3-1. Three, one. A lot of teams mm. do it because you can get a lot of gold here. But if anyone gets caught out, they're not going to be able to collapse in time for a fight. So speak up. Jumped on CC. Can't ulti the kick him away. That was beautiful. That was necessary. Pressar gets him away from the Tom Kench, and that means two kills. He can jump back, but it should still be one picked up. The shields give him some time, but this still got to go over as it does. Lost on kill number four. That was so clutch. Micro decisions. Pride Stalker, that kick was perfect. And it is smart of Golden Guardians to set up traps. Uh, no one was currently threatening a turret for TSM but everyone was shown on the map. So that's a moment for Spika where he can't go there alone. He needs to take either a safer route where a laner can hover for him, or you need to wait until Golden Guardian shows to defend away because they had the one through one on the side. So either Huni gets to the turret or Takeover gets to the turret, then you can take control of the jungle. But as has happened multiple times this game, TSM is just not connected. So they're consistently getting picked out by Golden Guardians. And it felt like this was one of those micro things where like, look, we've got a Sinja ultimate, we've got a Tom Kench, like Shen Yi was on the screen. I can see the call like, well, if they're there, it's okay. Yeah, we'll press R and live. And so I can understand that decision, mm -hmm. right? Like they're the elements that say, this was normally a bad play, but our elements of the team comp make it acceptable. Sure. And yet out, out executed, right? Pride Sucker kicked him away from the Tom Kench in time. That angle's wrong, it looks a lot worse. And now Licorice in 1v2, needs to get Mega. Jumps over, very, very low, has the ulti. No, he was knocked up before he could cast a spell. The CC layer as well, TSM get one back. Very critical kill there because the death timer is super close to overlapping with the Cloud Drake. So now TSM can try and set up the mid lane move and try and put themselves on soul points. Something they have been trying to get for the last 10 minutes of the game. Crucial pick there onto Licorice. Important to note that it's going to be just five minutes every single time. The flash TP were used uh, more or less for the dragon. Last time the flash is going to be the same cooldown as the dragon comes up this time. Obviously you still have to press the buttons and get there in time. So a pretty easy one to track for TSM. They should know they have a decent amount of control right now as Botway will indeed be pushed in. And now they try to get rid of some of the wards and ensure that they can own all of this. Shen Yi stays near tactical so he can't be attacked. This is going to be a kill. Mid lane tier two to drop. Spika pretty healthy. Rockets, you get a guardian down, but most of this can be sustained back up. Yeah, but look at the control they have in the jungle right now. So no vision for Golden Gardens because there's a control ward there. There's a control ward here. There's a control ward there. There's just not a way for Golden Guardians to get in. So the kill onto Licorice gave TSM the numbers advantage to move into the jungle there and pick up this Cloud Drake uncontested. Well done. There you go. TSM getting the right things done. They had pushed pretty aggressively to own this bottom side of the map. This time around it sticks. The vision control says no thank you. And of course, Golden Guardians have to fight for it because that smite, smite, the, the smite went for Pride Stalker last time, kicking him out of the pit. They get to buy that five extra minutes here. But TSM on the cusp of a Cloud Soul. 33 minutes going to be the timer on that one. Looking towards the top side. Huni will be slowed up by a loss. It's going to be hard to win that one as Jinx. Doesn't get much done. Man, these, these fights are going to be so clutch. Like, look for Ole to try and find picks as he's been able to get consistently this game. But we really have to watch TakeOver in these fights. Like, the... The Silas with a Gnar ultimate 
can be such a game changer. It's kind of more potent than the Nar ultimate, like the Silas with the Nar ultimate. So if he's able to be there for a fight, Golden Guardians has to be careful, which is I think why they're making an aggressive move as Silas Ooh, is shown on a wave elsewhere on the map. Nice shot, Huni. Playing for the maximum, steals away. A drop, Big hook hit. is in though. This is a very targetable Graves. Like, doesn't have good escape tools. Ult's already down, has a flash as he need it though. Block of shield comes in, gets slowed up, and that's gonna be the kill picked up. Give it the right target, goes to Corky, not too bad. But, other side of the map, Takeover has an 800 gold tower to attack. And who's gonna defend it? Nobody. Cash positive TSM. If nothing else happens, it's a good death. True, and there are actually no objectives available currently. Baron will be up in 20 seconds, but Golden Guardians uh, does need to respond to the Silas bot lane before they can do something, but they're gonna have this small window here where they can get vision control in the river and then look to set up a trap when TSM checks. They're right for it. Kuni still dead, and he'll be dead for 22 seconds plus the TP channel. If it's a rush, they're going for it here. Jinx yeah. is on a full three items, can burn it down, and a Blaze Olive has package. Lee Sin so kick still up. This is a really good luck. I think Golden Gunner should be favored to win the Baron here. Pags come down to slow them down. It's hard to get over this one. Spika puts the ulti on. He wants to find his way in. W, I believe, missed the Baron. Prizer keeps waiting around. Tom Kench picks him up, spits him out. Health bar is low. TP in now for the Graves. And Whoa. they've got to call the blood. They've got to get out. Licorice is low. They can chase him, maybe. Big damage. Shen Yi flashes so in. Mm. Doesn't find it. But how about the rest? Here's the Noddle holding towards the backside. Takeover has it. Jumping in. It's a Zonia's Hourglass. It's going to buy some time. A second one burned now as well. Takeover still wants to fight a Pride Stalker. Doesn't land the stun. Ah. One for one so far. Graves down for the Nautilus. Speaking to ulti, though, as well. And careful, because Nar is low. Lee Sin is low. But Tactical misses the arrow. It's a one to one. This is not over. Takeover no. wants something. He's a level 16 Silas, but not enough With health. No, I think he's out of range. I guess Holds it's over. It, but you run slower while channeling it, so doesn't quite estimate it properly. Turns out it is just the one for one. GP forced out of Huni. Summoners down everywhere. Oh, that was so tense. Tactical flashed forward to try and get the execute at the end, which would have given them Baron. It misses, and it ends up being a one-for-one. One. But yeah, let's watch this one more time. So Spika, like, alts to try and brute force through the package damage, but just gets chunked for the majority of his health. Already takes half. Look he walks at, in. Yeah, so basically, if Spika was... If, if a Blaze Alt didn't walk inside the Zen ultimate, the package wouldn't have done damage. But he actually walks next to him and stopwatches to nearly chunk him out. But then they ended up taking enough damage that Huni's teleport inside the Baron can't be punished. And now it's just chaos. It's like a temporary 2v5 because Shendi and Spika are so low. Neither of Takeover or Huni die because of stopwatch usage and tactical finally getting here. A mistimed E, like just crazy yeah. has happened in that fight. And we're right back at Baron for another setup. 2,000 to go. Dragon Soul in 115 for TSM if they get it. Meganar back up right now. Is this the play? They find a slow, but you don't really want to go for Sin Zhao. Slowed up yet again. Jumps back to the wave. He'll heal back up, no problem. Meganar timing out. Once again, Golden Guardian's going to be on a small power trough. And the Corky and Jinx are starting to get very strong. Ooh. So TSM might need some good poke before a fight to win it. on in. Double stun. They can just kill Shen Yi. They're going to try to do so. Price like gets to kick out. The Varus, but the Root comes in, and they get two so far. 30. TSM are on this fight right now. Ole drops as well. TSM may finally stop the losing streak. Four are dead. A Blaze Olive can do nothing, and TSM are back today. The Hooney Graves flank was massive in that fight. They're going to pick up their second Baron in the game, and looking at the Death Timers, they can probably pick up the Cloud Soul as well. You see a couple of resets to go there right away, but in the meantime, the they'll take instead. the maximum. I mean, they can kind of split it up appropriately, right? I feel like they can knock down this turret, they can push the waves in out through mid, and then everyone can kind of collapse together in case they respawn and try. In case the Blave all TPs, you're there with items and health bars. Let's watch this one more time. Again, Ole wants to make something happen while they have the Mega Nar up. So moves over. They see takeover on mid, so they think, hey, we have a window. If they step up, let's go. Yeah. And there's... And he anchors into the Tom Kench, then ults the back line. Yeah, and Lee Sin tries, right? But like, then watch Prize Doctor, All the cooldowns are down, and he can just burst lost. And Prize Doctor sadly has no way to actually get behind the champion, right? He ward hops in, but doesn't have flash, so he can never... He can never kick Tactical. And though he kicks him out, just kind of gets killed, and the rest of his team, yeah. I mean, they burned the initial cooldowns on the Tom Kench, but Lee Sin didn't actually help kill him, so they didn't finish the first one. And Shenyi got to play the rest of his kit, and you can see, I think, I think he thought he had flash.
Because uh, you don't ward hop no. to kick a poke Varus backwards if you don't have flash, because what do you do with that? Yeah, I think you're absolutely right on that call. That's a big mistake there from Pride Stalker and Golden Guardian. So Baron up, Death Cap completed onto TakeOver. He's a huge level 18 Silas right now. Love and it. TSM wants this to be the final push. Here we go. Pushing down the waves. Now, this is going to be a turret under fire. Just a little bit. Huni, of course, is somewhat short range. Now, this going to be a risk, but TakeOver feels very safe down here. And that's one down. Takes Porky Rockets. Extra poke for the team. Varus, Silas. I like it. It's pretty cute. And allows him to push people down. Only going to take a couple of shots. Puts the shield on a bit late. Second one's going to miss. Third one's going to land. And to keep going for a little bit more. Bottom turret now dead as well. Huni got some alone time. Licorice terribly low. Has to walk away, get his health bar back up, and then hope for a Mega Nar play. Devil inhibitor down. TSM ready to keep going. 3,700 on the Red Bull Baron power play, and they're looking to maybe make that the Nexus over the top. Cloud Soul already claimed as well. They run fast. Tactical's a little low. He just landed some big poke on a loss, but if someone on Golden Guardians can reach him with a missile, that might be their chance, because if not, they're just going to sit Ooh. here and get more damage. They got another Rocket. chuck on him, though. Tried another one. I like that. The Valkyr decides how to find the target, but now Tactical doesn't have good sustain. Can they get the rest of it? Gets the summoner heal across. The sun's going to land, but first chomped up by Shen Yi, and now the ulti in front for Spica. No one's going to die except for Licorice. Chomp down. Kill two. Kill three. TSM are back fighting for their lives, and they will knock this one down. A Blaze Olive finds the poke, cannot yet get the kill, but it's going to be the Nexus. That one cannot run away. That one cannot kite. And TSM from 1-9 and nine will find their second win. They hope this roster works. The poke won't land, but the Nexus will still drop. There we go. The KDA is added two, and TSM double their wins. 2-9 and nine is not great, but it's a hell of a lot better than 1-10. Yeah. So yeah, TSM awesome. has got to be fairly pleased with their ability to take this win. They drafted a very aggressive early comp. Three lanes of Pryo was the way it ended up playing out. And they still have to win a bunch of close team fights. You can see Licorice there knows this was a close one. They do not want to drop games like this in their chase for playoffs. But that's a pretty banger game to end the week. That is a banger game. And we were just singing Golden Guardians praise. I think they are still a very good team. Yep. And this, this to me more is, this is a measuring stick that TSM are good. This isn't XD, Golden Guardians, Vinted, ha ha, that's TSM. This is the new roster. This is Shen Yi back in after some more practice, right, in the academy. This is TakeOver coming in. He's looked good both these games. In a sample size of one, he had like a bunch of really good laning stats. Like, well, it's sure. one game, we'll wait. But this is actually a much better looking squad. They nearly won against third place FlyQuest. They did win against fifth place Golden Guardians. If this is their look, this is a playoff caliber team who just needs to make up the wins to get there. You have very rosy glasses right now. Yes, but I, I do. I'm, I'm sure a lot of people appreciate the optimism. It is a huge step forward for them based on how much negative noise has been around the team. I completely agree on that. I will say, they played very aggressive early games. So I'll look to see if that can continue. And then they need to clean up really just their ability to stay connected throughout the rest of the game because that's where Golden Guardians was catching them. Yep. Right? Time and time again, Golden Guardians was seeing where the moves could be and getting a lot of kills to extend this game. Because based off what happened early, TSM could have possibly run away with it. But we ended up having that very close 35-minute Slugfest. Yeah. And how cool is it, by the way, that, that TakeOver is one of the big players here? Like, he, yeah. his, his career started in the, um, the, the Chilean version of a, uh, like a, like a, not LDO, um, but the European sub leagues, right? Yeah. It, it's the Chilean league that goes into LLA if you do really well and you play the qualifiers, right? right? From there, he was scouted into TSM Academy, yeah. plays there for a year. Now he's one and one in the LCS, right? Bringing up a 10th place team is like, we went from really poor to 50 50. Like, that is awesome, right? Yeah. There's, <laughs> Very few players who played mid lane for this team. Yeah. <laughs> it, Reginald, Bjergsen, Power of Evil, yeah. and then Kaido Takeover. There's yeah. only five in like 12 years of TSM. Yeah. <laughs> so it's odd circumstances, but like, oh yeah, I'm playing mid for TSM. Yeah. Can be a lot of pressure to come into, and I think he's done pretty well for his first week. Yeah, totally agree. It's been really cool to see, and, and that's wonderful. I want to see more of him. I'll be honest, I, I, I like Kaido as well. Like, I want to see him more. Maybe with some more reps down the line, I think he's like a, got a really good personality. So I do think TSM have found some really good pieces. Um, for how much these lanes have been turning around, like I thought Shen Yi Tactical played well together. Like the, the level yes. level like three all in, I think they both played that really appropriately. Tactical played it really aggro, yes. But like everyone made the right choices in those fights. Like these are good players. To your yeah. point, it's not coming together in the mid game. There are those gaps. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it's a team who switched players around a couple of times, right? It's a team with players from four different countries, five different countries even. Yeah, sorry, that's going to take some time sometimes, right? Yeah. So um, 
if if this is the trajectory, then you know, is it like the four and five run? Is it uh, you know six wins? Maybe we hit playoffs. I don't know, but that's what it kind of looks like here. I, I do have the road tinted glasses though. I think TSM yeah. looks like a playoff caliber team, and it's about making up the wins, which is tough. Yeah, I mean, when we're looking at the TSM history, nine and nine. Right? The win streak needs to continue if they want a chance of making playoffs realistically. So, huge road ahead, but going into the weekend, going into the next week with a win, yeah. really helps practice for the week following. Really helps practice for the week following. So, we are joining the Tigris and Spica for our Verizon post-game interview. Thank you, Freak. A TSM victory here today. So, I am joined by Spica for the Verizon post-game interview. What a hard-fought battle, though. So, I just wanted to first get your raw mm -hmm. thoughts on this particular game. So, back and forth. Um, yeah, I mean, I think, obviously, we still have a lot of things to work on, but, you know, win's a win. We double our wins today, so um, there's nothing, you know, to be sad about. Um, you know, it's been a while since I've done an interview, uh, so I'm happy to be here. I know, I'm so happy to get mm -hmm. to hear from you after this. I want to ask you about one specific play. Mm -hmm. It was over towards Dragon where we're, there was that fight where mm -hmm. the NAR ultimate into the package that mm -hmm. sent some of you over the wall yeah. out of the damage. What did you think of that? Honestly, that fight was crazy. Um, I wasn't, uh, everything was like um, explosive on my screen, right? But I, I, you know, I had a lot of confidence that we could win that fight. Um, and I think our millionaire takeover played really, really well today. And um, he was like a big part of our victory, I would say. Yeah, and him coming into the roster this week mm -hmm. as well. What are your thoughts from the jungle position just with those changes coming through? Um, I mean, I would say this split, it's been a little rough since we had like multiple roster changes. Um, you know, obviously, um, you know, just switching one player can affect the team dynamic, dynamic a lot. Um, so right now we're still trying to figure out what is the best for our team comp, what is our play style. Um, and I think um, just playing through mid jungle is probably our best bet right now. And I think today we showed that, um, you know, that's how we can win. Yeah, I also want to know just how you're doing individually because clearly mm -hmm. some frustrating tweeting last week into yeah. some more transparency through that Upcomer mm -hmm. article, the uh, translation duties that you have yeah. also been dubbed with. Just give me uh, the lowdown. Um, I mean, I'll, I'll say this split's been a bit rough for me um, just because I had like way more responsibilities compared to before. Um, obviously, you know, I'm not, I wouldn't say I'm performing up to my standards, but you know, it's like everybody's trying really hard. Um, to make the team work, and I think, you know, just got to try our best and, you know, keep going forward. Yep, a lot of responsibility to hold, but a lot mm -hmm. of faith still in you as a Honda MVP jungler yep. of the last season. I believe Dignitas and EG are the next ones on the mm -hmm. docket, and you clearly want to uh, accrue some more wins for TSM. Mm -hmm. What are you thinking going into the next week after this victory? Oh, um, not going to lie, I can't really trash talk when we're in last place, but, I mean, I, I, I think, um, you know, we got to win. Um, I would say I'm seeing a lot of improvement. We're still trying to work together. We have a lot of mistakes to fix, but you know I'm really hopeful for next week, and hopefully we could get more. You'll hit him with the ratios eventually. Of course. Way. All right. Just call me. <laughs> Chica, thank you so much for the interview. All right. It was nice talking to you. Oh yeah, what a day, what conversation we have had, and what things to break down on the analyst desk. So let's head on over to wrap it all up. Thank you so much, Tigris. Uh, great to finally get an opportunity to hear from Speak uh, as Mark TSM turns that one into a two. Yeah, that they did, Dash. And they you know what? It. They doubled their chances the for post-game interviews. And you heard Speak <laughs> excited about that. He's like, it's been so long, I'm back. <laughs> I mean, it's, it feels good to see the league MVP back on our screen doing That's interviews what's again. so wild about it, yeah. right? It's, <laughs> it is the, it's, the, it's the pedigree of that individual and the fact that it took us this long to be able to talk to him. But I think that that is a perfect representation of how tough this split has been for them. And Raz, in a, in a week where they make yet another swap, yes. takeover comes in, Shenyi back into the lineup, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they get the uh, huge. Like, it's really nice too because one of the criticisms I levy towards TSM is that not just the changing of the guard, a lot of the players going in and out uh, from the main roster, but also just the compositions. Like, their team identity was very clearly going to be pretty scrappy, but then in the first few weeks, they had a pretty based meta composition around like front to back team fighting with Victor and all that. Now, at least this has been the second week, week in a row where the identity has been fairly. Similar, uh, that they're playing through mid pretty aggressively, even with TakeOver coming into the roster. And so Silas and Xin Zhao being the main focal point, uh, it, this game, it's nice to see the improvements that they've made. Well, what a game for TakeOver, right? To come up and like, we've been talking about, okay, you know, 
Shen Yi coming back in. What is it going to look like for Tactical, who's talked about how it's difficult to play with two different supports? Yeah. Um, and I thought TakeOver did, I mean, obviously, again, they are playing a little bit more around mid jungle. There was a skirmish in bot lane where GG actually went in and TSM ended up taking over that fight too. So I thought that was really important in the early game to set TSM ahead because we were talking about how strong the early game from Golden Guardians has been. Yeah, and I mean, just a, as a, a small hit, talking about TakeOver, he does take player of the game here, but this interaction really did Ooh. decide it. Oh, oh, it's crazy. So it's insane. And it's like, you wonder if any player, any quirky player would make a different call there because it looks you so You want the juicy. damage, man. Well, you're and, layering it up on And it. if you're just slightly on the other side, you push them all into the yeah. river and yes. it's not that big of a deal. It's just... Exactly. And so that no, was it was the wild. right play. Unfortunate. Yeah. Pixel. <laughs> you look at it, you say you're looking at it the different way. They had different opportunities, and this one was another really unfortunate situation where Pride Stalker Trolls goes straight in for it, thinks that uh, the casters called it out, maybe thought he had Flash there to try and get the kick on towards uh, Tactical, ends up dying there, and his team gets flanked. And so this game clearly was Golden Guardians wants to win. It was Game of Inches, mm -hmm. and yes. unfortunately in this, uh, in this case, it didn't come out their way. Yeah, Golden Guardians had a better scale and composition. We're bringing the game back. Had that one, had that last team fight, the one in River bot side, the, the one in the River top side where they could have won, mm -hmm. but it was TSM that came in and took the opportunity, and it was great to be able to see, hey, now they got that second win mm -hmm. on the board. Uh, speakers back in the interview section, feeling happier at the progress, and TakeOver comes in with that much-needed player of the game. What a way to end the weekend, too. That's the other piece of it for me, is that it comes on the Sunday before you go into another week of practice. Hopefully, a little bit of an uptick in motivation for them uh, as they look to continue to improve their record. We already talked about the fact that TakeOver picked up player of the game in this fifth and final game of the day. Let's take a look at all of our POGs across our Sunday. It's Santor it's closer blabber it's johnson and then takeover so bunch of junglers there takeover got called up he doesn't even have a picture hey, you know, come in from about... academy. somebody snapped he a photo said, of him yeah. he probably got one as he's stepping off the stage. i hope so um but yeah it was a day of junglers day i kind of like the enigma you don't know what you might, might bump in him in the hallway it might be on the True. street nobody knows later. you don't know yeah. <laughs> All of the TSM is player of the game takeover. <laughs> um, I think uh, it is so fitting, though, to see those three junglers in yeah. a row mm -hmm. pick up player of the game as yeah. well, just because, again, it kind of reestablishes in our minds who the real uh, LCS jungle greats are. But as we flip over to the split long rankings, we're going to see Summit there alongside Santorin someday, Danny and Jose Diodo. We already talked about it after the Team Liquid game, but Santorin has been on a tear this split and it has been so surprising for so many people because you have Whippo, you know, you have uh, Bjergsen, you have all of these great uh, players on your team, but he's just been the standout and Summit has just been dominant. So no, no surprise there. And we'd already talked about Someday. Uh, I know it was also talked about in the post-match interview where it's like, yeah, you know, Someday, if he locks in Trindamir, it's been a really consistent point for us who he was pointing out. Um, and I think it is also reflected in how many times he has been getting player of the game for that pick. We hit the player of the games. We have to talk about the MasterCard player of the week. And this time around, I believe, because I wait for all the votes, it goes to our spring MVP, our two-time MVP at that in Blabber. He's the spring monster. Every single time spring rolls around, Blabber's going to run kids over. And it's happening again. He got the MVP the last two spring splits. You feel like you set him up for a third one because, my God, when he is online, he is just able to find so many kills in these games. Incredibly influential. Even just seeing this game uh, today that he had on the bear, <laughs> Black Bear came in and just took Storm from level one, honestly, just destroying <laughs> oh, Cosmic. Lordy. The bot lane dive that he had. What an Look insane KDA. 10, 1, and 20? That's 30, Dash. That is that how that works? Yeah. Oh, thanks, bro. Because <laughs> as you know, I can only go from one to two. Yeah. So yeah. everything I'm above that count your whole way up gets three, a lot more four, difficult. Five, yeah, for me. Thirty. That's more than the number of appendages I have. So I would have gotten stuck uh, at a certain you point. Gotta go Thank you, back Mark. Down, ever, start over ever the ever the good friend. Help um, I had so many things that I wanted to bring up, and now they're all gone uh, <laughs> because of well, because of fault that because wow. yours. It's your fault. I blame I'm putting the blame on you in this moment. Why is anyone um, listening to me? Oh my goodness, they're all. It's all gone. It's all gone. 
You're to take the blame for this one. I was gonna. Oh, I was gonna make a point about how he's gonna have to compete against the likes of some of his own teammates, though. And we've had that discussion in the past when it comes to like a, an MVP point. Is that when you're on a, a team with such strong individuals like yep. Summit and Berserker, who've also been picking up a lot of pogs, with those playing into the MVP voting, it's almost gonna get more difficult for Blabber in a way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like being a standout on a team that's constantly fighting for it. Uh, I love the fact that we, when we were going into the Cloud9 game, you, uh, uh, Mark, talked about how Berserker, sure, like the first five minutes, like he's doing a great job with little resources, but then he goes into the later portions of the game, especially on Aphelios, and it's just absurd what he can do on that champion. And so uh, it's going to be difficult, uh, but, you know, regardless of the pog, he ends up winning Player of the Week. I think the, the MVP point about having multiple people to choose from as well is also, uh, well, there's two super teams it feels like right TLB now. TLB and the L, right? Yeah, yeah, and they also are loaded with talent, and so they might be stealing votes from each other too, and if it's coming down to those two horses, right. at least it uh, feels like an, a fair fight. So and not whoever's just like... in third is feeling real good then. <laughs> <There you> go. <laughs> That's their, their, <laughs> see their window. Let's see if they, anyway. We got plenty more weeks for each of our players to make their case for spring MVP. Let's pull up our Samsung SSD Fast 5 leaderboard for the week. Uh, speaking of Team Liquid, you see three different Team Liquid members topping their charts. Yeah, I mean, seeing uh, Buipo, Hansama, but for me, Santorin, who has had probably his best split in his career so far. Ooh. I know that he went to the finals with FlyQuest and he was uh, doing insanely well there, but it's really difficult for you to be a standout player on a team like that, as stacked as that. And so, uh, nice to be able to see him, you know, killing it so far. He's absolutely been killing it, and then and rather congrats to those of you who earned bonus points on the LCS Sleeper app for having this week's top performers in your lineups. This brings us to the end of the day, so let's refresh with our standings to see where each of our teams land. It's TL and Cloud9 at the top of the table, with FlyQuest now standing alone in third place. 100 Thieves to follow before we get to that tie for fifth between Dignitas, Quantum Pei, Evil Geniuses, and Golden Guardians. Immortals Progressive, CLG, and TSM bringing up the rear. However, TSM, by putting a win on the board, close that gap on the ninth place team. We're starting to see some separations there, Dash. Mm. Finally, there's not that blob at fourth place. Ooh, the blob. The blob, some would blob say. Now? What would you call like it, that. Mark? Uh, I would call it a really tight race. Yeah, okay. you would call it that? Okay, <laughs> yeah, fair enough. Big, there's a big pack in the middle of that race. I wouldn't right. use any weird words. Yeah, of course, nothing. Okay. No, all right, that's ma that makes sense. It's definitely blob-shaped. <laughs> uh, Next week's schedule, Saturday, is when we return. We got Golden Guardians versus 100 Thieves to kick things off before FlyQuest takes on CLG. Evil Geniuses Team Liquid game number three always delivers. And then Cloud9 taking on Immortals Progressive. That one intrigues me, if only because of what we've seen out of Immortals more recently and closing it out with Dignitas Quantum Pay versus TSM. Emily, I already shouted out three and four. Uh, any thoughts on those matchups or something else that I've missed maybe in I this I mean, lineup? yeah, that Evil Geniuses TL matchup stands out to me. Golden Guardians 100 Thieves is also really interesting to me. Golden Guardians definitely had a really rough week this week, so I want to see how they recover from that. Yeah, and I'll, I agree with the Golden Guardians 100 Thieves, and I would also tag on to the IMT Cloud9, both teams facing, you know, stronger opponents. And on that one, they ended this week feeling... A, hungry and feeling robbed. They feel like they could have done better. They only have themselves to blame. And then going into the next week, the, I you know, would naturally want to come in stronger. Golden Guardians with only one more loss before Nero gets fired. No, oh my publicly gosh, stated. stop so, it. Woo! I heard as soon as All they right. lose, it's just going to happen like backstage. Pressure you know, on, baby. We can get a camera crew out there and watch it happen live. <laughs> you and the gaff have an agenda. Wow. <laughs> I, I didn't make it. He said it. I didn't say it. He said it. He has a guaranteed uh, contract yeah. he said as well. So. Uh, well, I fine. would like to take a moment to invite all of you to join us in the Bud Light League Lounge alongside myself, Latires, Jose Diodo, and Johnson of FlyQuest, who will be joining us over on twitch.tv slash Bud Light right after the highlights at the end of this. So you can either hop on over to that channel or wait for the raid, but either way, that's going to do it for us on the LCS channel. So from myself, the casters, the entire live broadcast crew, thank you so much for watching. We'll catch you next week. Until then, stay healthy, stay safe, and be good to each other. Good night. That actually looked pretty close. We swapped to a dart, yeah. so you get some time to calibrate. I think that's fair. Yeah. Tight spiral. Okay. Oh, I'm just trying to reach it. Welcome back, everybody, to another day of the LCS. <sighs> I'm Flowers. That's Kobe. And we got some, uh, we got some immortals and TL coming yeah. their way. Arrow's hitting Nexus. And what? what else? They're what are we doing here? We're trying to go for the Nexus. We're trying to go for the team fight. What's the call from immortals? The call is getting aced. Team Liquid shuts them down. Oh no, immortals! It's a disaster. They're at the.
the finish line and they fall flat on their faces. Hello, one, two, three. Can you hear me? I'm shitting on J and one brown right now. Okay. Recalling like a little bit. Can Jay say something? <laughs> one, two, three, one, two, three. I think I'm good. Jenkins in the middle of four. Jenkins doesn't stand a chance. Palafox gonna get farmed up next. FBI's still alive. Double kill to the AD carry. Are you kidding me? We got Assassin's... Shibata and Kha'Zix in the same day. Assassins galore, Flowers. I am so happy today. Impact's got the angle, but Berserker's got the kill. Inspired is down, and Danny's ready to follow. Cloud9 turns it right back around. JoJo's trying to run, but Fudge says no, thank you. Let's go, Bio Daddy. That's a big plus right there. Do they have enough damage? It's still Johnson cutting around. He actually kills Fake God, and he's going for blue. Let's Bane lay. Oh, Flash Q Auto. He nearly had the damage, and it's time for them to run. Neo is smited. Neo will fall. He can't dodge anything. A double kill for Kumo, and then you speed it up. Okay. Yeah. My doctor told me to floss every day, and my teeth never look better. They're pushing in, now Ola gonna be stunned up, the dive right back in for Lee Sin's going to fall, and TSM get their revenge, four kills, a push in for Huni. this should be enough, the Chompers won't be enough, will be slowed, will be killed, and Ace, TSM may lose the Dragon, but they win the map, and they're going for Baron.